This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're reading Psalms 103, starting at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He maketh known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Verse 13, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them. So the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Wow, we're stopping there at verse 14. I just want to share with you that God knows. He knows our uprising, our strengths, our, our abilities. He knows our down sitting. He knows our weaknesses. He knows us inside and out. And while we're going through this awkward time in these last days, understand you have an advocate. You're not alone. You're not going through this thing by yourself. God is compassionate. The Bible says he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. You hear me? God's not a deadbeat dad, y'all. God is right there. That's why the Holy Spirit is also interpreted as paraclete. What does paraclete mean? Here you are. Here's the Holy Spirit right alongside. He's He joined at the hip, y'all. He's with us. He's in us. And he's working for us on our behalf. So don't feel like you are going through hell all by yourself. Don't feel like you are afraid and there's nobody there to rescue you. Rescue me. Oh, yes. God is there to rescue you and me in every situation. Many are the trials of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Not some, all. Now, what I want to ask you is what are you doing while you're in the middle of your quandary? What are you doing while you're in the middle of being tossed around by the winds and the waves? Who are you calling on? Where are you turning to? What are you reaching out for, for your life, uh, your life preserved? What are you reaching out for, for someone to rescue you? Who are you calling on for your rescue? Now, this is the sad part nowadays. In these last days, there are so many people who are tapping in to the occult. They're reaching out to all of these different false gods, these idols that they expect to protect them. They expect to deliver them. And then when life gets hard, they wonder, why are things falling apart in their lives? Why do they vulnerable? Why does it look like the devil has the upper hand and God is on a coffee break? 
Why does it seem like God has stopped loving? Why does it seem like God stopped caring? You ever see the movie, Ray? It's the movie about Ray Charles. And this is shortly after he lost his eyesight as a little boy. Ray fell. There was one scene where his mother was right there in the room with him and Ray fell and he started crying. Half the crying was out of frustration of being blind and not being able to see. The other part of the crying was just wanting mommy to come and coddle him and hold him and comfort him because he fell and he hurt, his, he hurt himself, but he wasn't hurt. He was more stunned and shocked than anything. But check out what Mama Sita did. And this is where a lot of you don't get God's love, God's wisdom. Mama Sita was standing right there looking at her son. And while she was looking at her son, what ended up happening? Welcome, Daniel. I'm in the middle of the word, but thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it blesses you. What a lot of you don't get is that when God sees you in the middle of your trial, when he sees you in the middle of your quandary, in the middle of a bad situation, or to you it seems bad, it feels bad, it smells bad, it looks bad. It's not always as bad as it looks. This boy, Ray, when he was a little boy, just lost his sight, fell. His mother's watching him. She did not run. What is a mother's instinctive desire to go run to comfort her child? Make sure he's okay. She could see he was okay. No blood, no cut, no scrapes. He was fine. She kept telling him, you cannot depend on anybody else. You've got to learn to take care of yourself. The world is not going to care for you like you want to be cared for. He's on the floor crying. She's leaning up against, standing against the wall with tears running down her eyes. She's crying for her baby. She's hurting for him. But she cannot allow herself to run to his rescue. She can't allow herself to run and scoop him up in her arms and rock him and coddle him. She can't allow herself to do it because he's got to grow up in this world as a blind man. And if he's going to be a man, she can't keep him as a boy. So she stands there and lets him process what he sees as a bad experience. That's the wisdom. That's wisdom, y'all. That woman was wise. And as it turned out, as a few minutes went by, the tears that were coming down his eyes turned into curiosity. Why was he curious? Because something got his attention. Why did something get his attention? Because the loss of eyesight heightens the other senses and he could hear a cricket walking across the floor. Now he's not concentrating on the fall. Now he's concentrating on the sound. And he's curious now. And as he listens, the tears are starting to go. And he starts following the sound. And he's actually able to catch the cricket in his hand and holds it and listens. He can't see it, but he was able to catch it through the ability to hear. Now, he's no longer thinking about the fall. The fall is history. Think about this. There are times we go through life and we think that what we're right in the middle of is the end of the world. And God has to step back and refrain from coddling you and you think God has abandoned you 
but he has not. What God is trying to show you, number one, this is not as bad as it seems. Number two, I'm right here with you. But number three, I've got to help you grow, grow, grow. You must bear much fruit. You must multiply. You must grow mature, grow stronger. You cannot be coddled and grow strong at the same time. So when you feel like God is step to stepping aside and letting the chips fall where they may, sometimes it's in his divine wisdom because he knows that there are some things you will not see and you will not hear. Some things you will not understand if God steps in or sends someone to your rescue too soon. Some things you must learn, learn well. And some lessons are learned best in the dark. When you can't see what's going on, you can't see why it's happening, you don't get it. And God will heighten your senses and start to open up your level of understanding. And that that was obscure to you starts to come clear. And you say, oh, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Mm -hmm. I can see all obstacles in my way. You start understanding what's really happening. You start seeing the enemy for what he is, people for what they are, how things come against you, but it's not against you. It's not working to your bad. God is working all things together for your good. Remember I said in the other message, I had to lose a house to get a house. I had to lose a husband to get the most wonderful husband I could have dreamt of. Sometimes you got to lose to gain. And some things you lose, you lose through your own sins. Some things you lose, you lose through your own sour attitudes and bad dispositions. Some things you lose through your poor perspective, through your blurred vision. You learn through your immaturities. You learn through your fallacies and your mistakes, your losses, your mishaps, your poor choices. And God knows you got to learn some things the hard way. So he cannot allow himself to run to your rescue. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. He knows my name. He knows your name. He knows your situation. He can count every hair on your head. He knows what's going on and he knows what it takes. You ever see a chemist working in a lab and they want to create a solution that accomplishes a particular thing? Well, they know the chemistry. They have to use this particular component and mix a certain amount with that component in a dish, in a, in a glass container. And they have to mix something else after a certain amount of time. They drop that in and then they have the chemical reaction. But if the timing is off, if, if the measurement is off, think about it. If the wrong components are thrown in, nothing will happen according to your desired results. So there are times God uses the good the bad, the ugly, even some of your sins, some of your mistakes, some of your mishaps, some of your poor choices, some of your rash decisions. He'll use it all and bundle it up 
Why is he bundling it up for you rather than against you? Because while you're in the middle of your mess, you're crying out to God. You're not running from God. You're not running from God's people. You're not avoiding the word. You're not avoiding the righteousness of the saints. You're running too. Just like a child runs to his mother. He may have disobeyed his mother. She may have said, you don't go out today. It's too rainy. You'll slip and fall. Stay in the house. The kid sneaks out. He runs. He plays. He loves the rain, but he falls and he scrapes his knee badly. Long scrape, bleeding all over the place. He comes running to mama. Why? 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 What does mommy do? Scoop him up in her arms and she takes care of the wound first. Then when she knows he's okay and she's taking care of the wound, then he must hear a little bit of a lecture. This is why I didn't want you to go out, baby. I knew this would happen. See, a lot of you think that either your parents or people that minister over you are stupid. You think they're meddling. You think they're judging you. You think they're finding fault, but God has assigned them to you and given them extra sight to see into you so that they're not surprised by what you do. They're not surprised by the mess you put yourself in because God's not surprised. He already knew. And he's preparing them to minister to you when all the chips fall, when everything falls out of place. And he knows, okay, now we got to get your life back together again. Now, for those of you who are living for the Lord, you're living a righteous life. I mean, this goes for those living righteous and those who are not, but you're his people. We all have up times and down times. Don't any of you think that your righteousness is equivalent to Jesus Christ, is not. Your right, righteousness according to Isaiah is like filthy rags. Trust me. So if you try to get on your high horse and you're sitting up there looking out the corner of your eye at your brother or your sister because they did time in prison because they wouldn't listen to good counsel, your good counsel, don't think that they're getting their comeuppance and you ain't got to visit them and you don't have to be bothered. You ain't praying for them because they didn't want to hear. No, baby, how many times have you disobeyed God? How many times have you turned a deaf ear to the word of God, to God's counsel, to God's counselors, to God's ministers? How many times have you, have you told them, talk to the hand, baby, stay out of my business? Yeah, you may not have said it out of your mouth, but your actions spoke loud and clear in God's ears. So don't get on your high horse when you see someone else going through, because your day is coming for all of us. Our day will come. Trust me. Everybody has their day in the sun and everybody has their day under the clouds. Some things are deserved and some things just happen because life happens. Some of y'all got another expression for that one. But yeah, yeah, we're not going there. Life happens. So what I want to say to you is no matter what happens in your life, God is able to heal you. God is able to deliver you. Forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. See, here's the difference. When you're going through stuff, when life hurts, when life kicks you in the teeth, you have to remember going through life Without the Lord is like going through a winter blizzard, a hurricane, without rubbers, I mean galoshes, boots, without gloves, without a coat, without anything to protect yourself from the elements. That's what you're doing when you go through life without God and without his counsel. 
But when you go through life and you go through the blizzard and you go through the storm, when you get in the house, your clothes are dry. Your coat might be wet. Your boots might be wet. They might be dirty. But you're kept dry. Why? Because you're covered. You're covered in the blood of Jesus. You're wrapped, you're wrapped up, tied up in the Lord. You're under the ark of safety. You're in the shadow of the Almighty, in the secret place of the Most High. You're under his divine protection. And even while you're under his protection, life happens. But when all the dust settles, you're unscathed. You're stronger than you were before you went through the storm. You're wiser than you were before you went through the mishap. You're smarter than you were before you made those poor choices. Mm -hmm. Because God delivers you out of them all. Why? You're calling on him. You're, you're crying out to him. You're confessing your sins. You're forsaking your sins. You're not hiding your sins. You're not hiding from God's people thinking you're hiding from God like Adam and Eve did. They covered themselves and hid. No, that's what shame does. Shame and guilt makes you run and hide. When you feel the desire to run and hide, baby, no, bear yourself butt naked before God and say, Lord, here I am all messed up, all chewed up, and it's my fault. Help me, please. Forgive me. See the part you play. But now let's get back to life. Mm -hmm. Life and all its vicissitudes. Remember, God is there in your corner. Forget not all his benefits. What are some of his benefits? Let's rehearse them, shall we? Because some of you forget that there are benefits to walking with the Lord. See, God is not just to get out of hell free card. God is not just the one to come to your rescue when your butt's in a grinder. No, listen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He does what? He forgives all your iniquities. What else does he do? He heals all your diseases. All diseases are not physical. Some of y'all are diseased in the mind. Some of you are diseased in the, in the heart, in the emotions. Some of you, you can't let go of the past. It's all those pains and all those misgivings and the abuse and all the things that you've been cheated out of. God knows what you've gone through, but God also knows how to get you out of it. As long as you walk in sync with him, like a child walking in their father's big footsteps in the sand. They may have to take a longer stride, but they're putting their foot where their father's footprints are. You have to stay up under God's armpits. Even when you're messing up, you got to stay up under God's armpits when you're afraid. You got to stay up under God's armpits when you need his counsel, when you can't seem to hear his voice, when it seems like he's turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to you and have gone and decided not to mess with you, when you feel like he doesn't love you anymore. No, it's like Ray and his mother. When Ray was blind and couldn't and he fell and a mother refused to run to his rescue to coddle him. Nope. Some things you have to experience. Some of you are headed toward ministry and you have to fall flat on your face. God knows it. Why? You're so full of pride. You're so full of arrogance. You're so full of yourself. You think you're all that in a hundred bag of chips and God is saying two inches off of you with the Holy Ghost and look how bad you stink. Two inches, two minutes of free time without me. And look how you mess up. Why is that? Because God wants you to minister in a particular way. You got to minister in love. What comes with love is part of love is compassion. 
You cannot minister in compassion when you're full of yourself. Yeah, I'm all that, baby. I'm cool like the Fonz will look at himself in the mirror like, no, I'm good. No, you ain't good, baby. None of us are. None of us are. We're two seconds from, do, from blowing it completely. So that's the reason why God steps back from your life at times. It's not always to punish you. Sometimes it's to open your eyes and teach you, show you a thing or two. When you think you know it, when you think you've been around the block enough times to handle it on your own, and God's saying, no, baby, I got to put you back in diapers. And you think you're all that. And you wonder, why am I regressing? Why is my life going down the tubes? Because God has to show you a thing or two. That's why. God has to show you what's going on in your life. God has to show you what's happening in your heart. What did he say to the Israelites in the wilderness? Yeah, I had to try you. I had to see when things ain't going all perfectly, what's in your heart. And when I see what's in your heart, guess what? You're going to see what's in your heart because I'm going to show you. That's what God does. He shows us who the idols are in our lives. He shows us where our life preserves are, where our little hidden cursed things are buried like Achan, burying them out. Remember the battle of Ai? Let me go to that. Joshua chapter uh, 7. We already did that last time. So now we're going to go to Joshua chapter 8, but I'm going to summarize chapter 7 real quick. Real quick, y'all. Okay. What happened in Joshua 7 is they went to do the battle of Ai. They got cocky like some of us do as Christians. Mm -hmm. They had a battle to fight like many of us do in life. So what did they do? Oh, we don't need all that. You know, they're just but a few. Let's just A few of us need to. Yeah, you don't need all that. We're good. We're good. Like the Fonz, I'm good. So here they go to fight the battle, and they lost like sissies. They turned tail and run. Behinds got whooped. Why? Joshua's on the ground. Oh, God, how could you? Oh, Lord, woe is me. How could you let this happen? God told them, boy, get up off your face. Israel has sinned. That's why battles get lost so horribly at times. Because of the sins we allow in our lives. With sin comes defeat. Remember that. We're looking for the victory. But when we open the floodgates to sin and we shake hands with the devil and all his minions, all his ways, all his standards, because it appeals to the flesh. Oh, oh, my flesh. Oh, I love my flesh. <laughs> oh, yes. Me, me, me. Me, myself, and I. My way. I had to do it my way. You have set yourself up for defeat. But when you fall at God's feet and repent and ask for forgiveness, what does he say? He said he forgives all your iniquities, not some, all of them. Because he is a merciful God. He's not a flunky, but he is a merciful God. He knows when you're really sorry. He knows when you're only sorry because your booty got whooped. He knows if you're only sorry because you got caught. He knows if you're only sorry because you're paying a consequence. And he knows if you're really sorry because you disappointed him. That's the godly sorrow that leads to repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is not the apology. Repentance is change doing an about face. That's true repentance. So here you are. Uh, Let's go to Joshua 8. 
Joshua 8. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you truly come around. You truly get the point. Now, some of you are not repenting because you committed a particular sin. Just life happens. And God begins to show you some things and teach you some things because your flesh is going to rise up. Jack will boing, jump out the box. And you may not handle all of life's vicissitudes like God would like you to. And he already knows you're not going to handle this well or that well. So he's showing you what's in your heart. While he's showing you what's in your heart, this is what happens when you repent and turn and say, God, help me. God, heal me. God, this is the part I played. Take responsibility for what you did in this thing to make it messier than it needed to be. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given it into thine hand. The king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. Now, he did everything God said do. Boom, they won the battle. That was good. Sometimes you lose battles in life, but you're going to win the war. They won that war. But the defeat was because Achan, in chapter 7, had hid the Babylonian garment and all that other mess, the accursed thing that God said, don't touch. Don't touch the unclean thing. That includes people, baby. What did Jesus say? You know them by their fruit. You don't have to hear a confession. You don't have to hear a profession. You don't have to hear a lie or go for the lie. Watch what they do. Watch what they don't do. You know, you know the word enough. Now, some of you who don't know the word, God won't hold you as accountable for it. And your booty whooping won't be so severe. Because he honors the fact that you really didn't know. Now. So here they got the victory. How did they get the victory? They did it God's way. God dealt with the sin. He judged the sin. He punished the sin. He removed all the crap out of their midst. Now they have a brand new start. And so do you. God bless you. Because one thing I love about God, he's a God of many chances. And no matter what we go through, listen, I'm not talking as someone who never messed up. Oh, my goodness, have I messed up horribly. That's how I know. That's how I know. But I'm going to tell you this. God wants a humble and contrite spirit. When you're sitting up there saying, you stay out of my business. This is me. I'm going to be me no matter what. I don't want to hear all that Bible talk. I don't want to hear you judging me. I don't, uh uh, that is not the attitude, baby. You are asking for God's worst. Watch your attitude, whether you're going through something because it's your fault or whether you're going through something because it's an attack of the devil. Ask God through the whole thing to watch your attitude and adjust you so that you are bearing fruit rather than committing sin, trying to make a mess better when you're actually making it messier, handling it through your flesh, handling it through your own understanding. That's why the Bible says, don't lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. He will not only direct your path. This is me speaking now. He will not only direct your path. He will also direct your emotions. He will direct your thoughts. He will direct your reactions. Why? Because you're asking him to handle you. So Jack doesn't come out the box. As long as you lean on God, 
Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. That's Jesus Christ, y'all. Take a look at yourself, and you will look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to stay. When you get caught up in mess, we all do. Run to daddy to clean your mess up and ask him to help you stay clean. Amen? God bless you. You will have the victory in this life in the long run. As long as you stay in his hand. As long as you stay in the vine, stay connected. Amen. This is not a solo run. Stay connected. God's got you. God loves you. God is for you. All I say is do the same with him and you'll be all right. Even when you mess up, even when it's your fault, you'll be all right because you're trying. Keep trying. Amen? Amen.